Edward Chella Art and Architecture presents a three-person exhibition featuring new sculptures and installations by Lynn Aldrich, Laurie Frick, and Tim Hawkinson. The transformation of everyday objects and materials into art has been the pursuit of all three of these artists featured. Whether they are materials found on the street, at a garage sale, or at Home Depot, each of these artists has utilized the abundance found in a modern consumer society to create highly personal artworks that are transcendent, inducing new life, meaning, and purpose to the material's original use. Tim Hawkinson is recognized for his transformation of everyday materials into complex sculptural systems through surprisingly simple means. Hawkinson is an alchemist, bringing life from the inert, which often magically transforms common materials into living artworks. Often drawing inspiration from the human form, the most prominent of the works of his on view is Foot Quilt, a large-scale sculptural tapestry that majestically uncovers for us an intimate portion of the artist's own body. Well, I am interested in materials. I shop for the materials and search for them in, in a consumer society, attempt to push them slightly just through accumulation or a repetition into a place where they reveal metaphor and analogies to our contemporary lives. The title is Hydra, Hydrant, and so I am referencing the Greek myth and the water snake was particularly threatening because the heads would grow and become two heads and it was impossible to control. But in, in many ways it's also uh, for me a hopeful image. I'm referencing the idea of a fountain, um, something that is dry and parched but it references being able to carry water. This piece is inspired by my love of nature in the sense of the bounty and extravagant diversity of nature. The uh, forest is being cut down all over the world, a clear-cut kind of mode of destruction that I lament. And this kind of forest fragment is, is inspired by a desire to call attention to that. It really is constructed literally from ink and the products that are um, available as far as ink cartridges and ink pads and blotting paper representing a kind of blotting out of, of knowledge in a way and a loss, a kind of entering the dark age in some way, an ending of some kind. But I wanted the, the color to also remain glowing in the work so that it references for me also a kind of optimism that, that the ember might take on another spark. I like using familiar materials. I mean, I really love materials, both the possibilities of what they mean to people and the idea that they sort of recognize them but they don't know for sure. There's also this crazy opportunity to transform them into something completely else like little laminate countertop samples, or cut up junk mail, or gallery cards. It's a connection to the real world, but they become something completely else. So the works are about the, the specific and unique patterns of you. Uh, I'm, I'm really fascinated that there's something about brain rhythm, and human pattern, and visual pattern in the world that's all connected. And so I've been measuring myself as part of the quantified self, self-tracking. So I measure my weight, my temperature, my um, steps that I've taken every day. I measure whether I have an upset stomach. I mean, I really, everything that's really measurable about me, my time online. And, and it's this idea that it's really, it's not so far in the future that everything about you can be tracked. And I, and I don't see it as like worrisome, you know, self-surveillance, but that it could be positive and that that pattern starts to be reflected back to you, maybe in your homes, in the walls that you live, and that those patterns can be soothing and comforting and maybe motivating. I, I hope that people, when they see this work, that they think about themselves.
They think about the kind of crazy patterns of who they are, where they are in the world, and something about who they are. 